Hi there, uh, welcome to this episode. Uh, now look, by popular demand, uh, I'm back on the Benley. Everyone's been going, oh, you haven't done the Benley in ages. What's going on? Have you still got it? Look, well, look, I've never part with this thing. I absolutely love it. Um, and uh, we're back on the Benley for a good reason. I've been doing the 1100s and thousands and the Honda Rebel and all the rest of it. Um, but uh, yeah, I am back on the Benley. And the reason being, and I've wanted this on here since I put the fairing on, I've been looking high and low. I had to drive all the way to Shropshire to get them. But I have, check this out, a pair of Rickman panniers, uh, they're Alpines. I didn't know that actually. I only found that out once I bought them. Uh, for um, the Honda Benley. Now, these didn't come off a Benley. They came off a CM250 Custom, which the frame is quite a bit bigger. But look, um, they're all right. They've got the rubbers on them. They've got the opening straps. I have one key that fits both of them. So I've got a key. I can get another one cut as I've got the uh, original. And um, here they are. Now, look, a few bits came with them. Uh, it, has, it had these, which basically bolt there and then go to the footrest. Um, I have offered these up, as you can see in the background, which I'll drop onto in a minute. Uh, the rack is on it. Um, but um, these are nowhere near long enough. I've had a sighting lap with these and put them on the mounts that are on the bike that I've managed to get on there. Um, so I'm going to have to make some more of these the right length out of this bar. Uh, I've got another bar over there in the workshop. Uh, it's really sturdy. Uh, and the reason you need this is because when the panniers are vertical, if you haven't got a stay on the bottom here to the footrest, they can waggle in and out like this. And also they're supported on a round bar and um, they can pivot round. And this stops all that and it stiffens uh, the whole assembly up. So I will be bending this. Obviously, it's got to be, you know, done roughly this sort of shape, but a lot longer. It needs to come to about here. Um, so that's that, we'll be doing that. Um, we're gonna mount the panniers uh, on the rack. Uh, now, obviously these, I didn't see them on the bike, the guy had already taken them off. Uh, and they were, they've obviously only been mounted there, there, and there, and uh, straight on the rack. Now, what I want to do is make a metal plate to go on here, and I'll use all these mounting holes, so there'll be a plate bolted on with five fixings. Uh, and that also makes it sturdier uh, with this piece to the footrest and that plate. It stiffens the whole assembly up uh, and it stops any movement. And it also means you can load them to the gunnels. You can't just put a pair of waterproofs in. You can have it stuffed full of whatever you want in there. So uh, it's a bit laborious, but I am going to make two plates for this one and this one. They're both identical. So once you've made one, you've got the template for the other. Um, so that's that. So we'll be doing that in a minute. Um, and the other thing I noticed, when I just, I haven't bolted these on, but when I offered them up, I noticed that the original footrest go back at an angle like this. Uh, and when you go to pivot it down, it was fouling the pannier. So I would have had to leave them down all the time. Well, I, I don't want that. Um, and it just shows you, never throw anything away. These things, uh, I worked on a BM many, many years ago. Uh, I don't even know if they're the rider or pillion. I think they're rider and they're adjustable. Uh, like they used to do. You don't get bikes with adjustable footrests now, not really, anyway. That's so simple, so I can bolt that on. So the original footrest came back at an angle from here. This moves it forward, what's that, an inch? Um, and you can have it vertical, so it'll clear the panniers, and it also makes it a little bit further away from the panniers. If you have big feet with the standard ones, even if you're folding them out, uh, well, your heels would be right up against the pannier and you, you wouldn't be properly supported. So. These still aren't perfect, but they're far enough away to make it usable. Um, so when I cleared my shed out, when I got this workshop, I very nearly threw these in the bin. Uh, I'm so pleased I didn't. And it just shows you never throw anything away. Even if you're being nagged or oh, you've got to have a clear out, don't hang on to it. And these, the, the profile of these aren't that dissimilar from the standard rider pegs, the pillion pegs on the Benley around. Uh, and also mine have gone so they go down at an angle, you know what I mean? When the pivots are worn, they go like this and your feet slide off them if you hit a bump. Uh, whereas this is all as it should be uh, and it gives me the clearance I need. So these will be going on and I've had to buy longer bolts obviously because the Honda thing's a little thin tin. Th these are rather sturdy. So I've got some 10mm metric fine bolts to bolt them on with. Um, so the, f the first thing I've had to do uh, is get the rack to fit. It was nowhere near gonna fit. So come around Harry and I'll just talk through that quickly and then we'll get on with the pannier brackets. 
Um, this rack, I kid you not, I've cut 60 mil out of this. It was way too wide. These arms were miles out. And I thought, oh, I had to scratch my head for about an hour, have a cup of tea, think about it, uh, as you do. Um, and I've used the original mount here. Uh, that was already on the rack. And that mounts up with the rear uh, mudguard mount on the frame. So that's really sturdy. It's on the main frame of the motorcycle. Uh, and then obviously this end needs to go to the top of the shocks. So all I had to do was shorten this, uh, and I've got my mate uh, Jay down the way here, to weld on these tabs. Um, so it doesn't look very pretty at the moment. This will be powder coated black when we're all done and dusted and I know it all fits. Um, so I've welded tabs on, used that mount, and I sliced it here and then cut 60 mil out, um, braced it inside with a bit of tube, solid bar, in fact, not tube, bar, uh, and then Jay welded up. It still needs a little bit of linishing in that, but you can see, I'm really happy with the width of that. It's kind of in keeping with the bike. Uh, and then I got it all on there, and then I went to uh, fit the seat, and um, it was only uh, loosely assembled, luckily, it wasn't welded, uh, and then these fouled the seat, so I've had to put a spacer in there. Um, but I'm really happy with that, it's really sturdy. Oh, and you may notice, I've got a black and silver number plate, because I've been told that's legal on this. Uh, how my mate Keith, who used to be a police rider, came round and said, no, it isn't. But I've been told if it's historic, you can have a black and silver number plate. Maybe someone out there can correct me on this, or, or let me know what actually is the scenario. I've been told if it's historic on the logbook, you can have a black and silver. Uh, because apparently it used to be L reg or something, and this is a W. So anyway, we'll clear that up down the line, and I may even run the gauntlet, because I do love that, and hopefully I won't lose my license. But uh, so look, the rack's on. Uh, we've done the welding, done the fitting, happy with that. These are the mounts that came with the panniers, and they were bolted there, there, and then obviously one at the bottom. Um, but I'm gonna make this plate, so let's get on with making the plate. Now, the first part of the process uh, is to make this plate, uh, which is going to uh, be not a big job, but it's going to take a little while. So the first stage in that, as ever with me, I don't know how other people do it, but this is the only way I can do it. Um, you make a cardboard template and there it is. Uh, so look, that goes on there. I I'm happy with that. Look, it's not perfect. It's not dead straight, but I'll cut this and linish it uh, when it's done. But that is good enough. It covers the mounting holes, look. Um, I've taken the plugs out of there ready for this one. And um, I've now got to cut this out. So um, I literally started with a bit of card, laid it on, and if you crease it with your thumb, you can see the witness mark of where it is. I drew them in by hand, straightened it up with a, with a straight edge. I use this. Um, uh, and there it is. So now I've got to make two of these. So I've got my template. Uh, there's my lump of alley. I've just found this. I've got a stash over in the corner. Uh, it's not immaculate look, but I'm not mirror polishing this. Uh, it'll get filthy on the bike in there. Um, so uh, I think this is four and a quarter mil thick, which is plenty sturdy enough. Uh, I'm going to cut the middle out so it doesn't weigh too much. Uh, not that that's that much of a thing, but it's just nicer if it's, I remember them being like this, so I'm going to do it like that. Um, and I've already drawn on it. Look, I've drawn around my template there. Uh, there we go. And now I'm going to cut this out with an angle grinder. So uh, right next is the cutting. Now the first thing is, and this is very important, put your tea over there because otherwise it's going to get full of aluminium dust and you don't want that. I've done it many a time. Uh, so I'll put that over there. Uh, I've got some sort of gloves just to keep the worst of the muck off me. Um, also, I'm wearing an old watch, so I don't care if that gets anything hitting it. Uh, and the first thing to do, I always do this. Uh, you don't have to, but it's good if you clamp it down. Um, and then you just go around your lines. I want to cut the outside first. Uh, and then uh, what we're going to have to do is drill some holes in the corners and then cut it with an angle grinder. Um, just to try and make it look reasonably pretty. So uh, I've got my glasses. Hang on, where's my others? I might try and wear them as well. Actually, I'm not going to wear them. Uh, can I wear them? 
don't know if that's worth wearing them or not. Uh, anyway, so right, I'm going to cut this line first, obviously, because that's what's overhanging, and we'll just rotate it when we're ready. Right, that's the first one cut. I'll tidy these up with a flap disc later. Um, so, yeah, now on to the next one. Just one quick thing here. A lot of people think when you cut with an angle grinder, you can't cut in a curve. But if you gradually reduce the cut, you can follow a curve. And it'll never be perfect, but by the time I flap disc that off, that'll look quite a nice curve. And as you can see, I've got fairly near the line. A lot of people think you've got to cut in a straight line. You don't have to if you go gently, especially on a long radius like that. Right, that's the basic outline of it cut out. Uh, this doesn't need to be too fancy because you can't really see it on the bike. I'm now going to flat disc the edges to get them uh, nice and smooth and take all these rough bits off. Uh, but you don't need to get too fussy with this particular one. Um, so now I'll flat disc it smoother uh, on the vise. So now I'm just going to dress these surfaces I've cut just to make them a bit better at the moment. That's getting there now, so all I'm going to do now is, because I'm going to be handling it to cut the middle bits out, I'm just going to take the burrs off the edge. I'll just use one of these for this. that. Now this one. I'll take them off for this. I don't need them for this. Right, before we go any further, so I'm not wasting time if it's wrong, just going to offer my template up and um, it doesn't have to be perfect it is just a bracing plate and when it's on you can't really see it but you know what I think that's fine it covers the five holes uh, they'll bolt on and that'll make this really rigid so the next thing to do is cut out the middle um, so right I'm happy to progress with that that's okay right next I've got to cut the middle out and to do that I'll put a big hole in each corner and then just join it with an angle grinder and then the middle hopefully uh, will drop out so um, first thing is is to get this thing in this is just a hole saw um, and uh, so yeah you just drill through until you put for a hole in each corner of that in a bit right that'll be over the line that one then you just lock it all off so it can't move Give it a little bit of that, and hopefully it'll cut. <laughs> Just go steady. Try not to get it all too hot, that's what this is doing, it's coolant. Well, 
Right, that's the first one cut. I'm sure there are proper engineers out there because I don't count myself as a proper engineer I'm not qualified in any way uh, would tell me I'm doing this completely wrongly but with what I've got available that's what I do next I've just got to redraw uh, my lines uh, and then cut them out and hopefully the middle piece will drop out and it will be a perfect fit now the cutting Hopefully, I won't make a mistake at this stage. I've done it before. It's so soul destroying. The last thing you're going to do, uh, and you louse it up. Well, hopefully, that won't happen. Right, that's the four cuts done. So that comes out. It won't look that impressive at the moment but I'll just uh, tidy these up again with a flat disc uh, just get them roughly level and uh, then I can drill it and mount it to the pannier right I've offered the plate up to the pannier that it's going on uh, with Harry's help uh, we've held it in place sometimes you need an extra pair of hands and um, just with a sharpie I've marked the holes uh, so it's one two three four five just going to centre punch them and then I'll drill them on the pillar drill. So just get this as near the middle as you can by eye. It doesn't have to be mega accurate. I'll make the holes eight and a half mils so I've got a bit of leeway to jiggle it. Right, that's just so you can locate it on the pillar drill with a small drill. Uh, it's locked off. Well, you locate it, lock it off, drill a pilot hole, and then you take them out to eight and a half mil, and then they'll bolt on here, hopefully. Right, the plate is now cut out. I'm really happy with that. I've offered it up against the pannier, and I'm happy with the fit. Um, I've marked the holes, uh, and I'm just going to drill five eight mil holes, and then hopefully, fingers crossed, it didn't move while I was marking it, and the holes will line up with the holes on the pannier. So, right, I'll just drill the holes. That's the first one and just go on and do the others. Right, I've now drilled the plate. Uh, let's see if it lines up. Hopefully it will. Uh, the only problem you can get with this is if it's moved when you've marked it. But look, you can see there the holes, that lines up. That is, I would almost say perfect, although nothing's ever perfect. Um, so that's that. I've now just got to make another one the same. Uh, to save you lot getting bored, uh, I didn't film making the other one because uh, it was exactly the same process all over again and it's been long-winded enough. Uh, so here is another one. So I've got that one there. I've just made this one and uh, that lines up beautifully. So look, the next stage, um, what I think I'm going to do is bolt these up on the bike. Uh, they'll go reasonably tight and hopefully roughly in the right place. And then when they're on and I'm happy with that fit that they're all vertical, I can then make 
the stay that goes from this bolt um, to my BMW footrest mount. Uh, so the next thing is really, is get them on the bike. Uh, they'll need to be jiggled a little bit, but get them on and make the sort of torque arm stay bottom bracket bit uh, that stops them wobbling in and out and it should stiffen up the whole assembly. And hopefully then I can load it to the gunnels. Right, so I've got the mounting bolts loosely in. Uh, I'm just gonna nip these up. And look, you could ride it with just these on now, but uh, I'll just show you what difference it'll make when the torque arm's on. Obviously, when you do these up, it does the clamps up, so you can't pivot it round the bar. This is only, at the moment, just vaguely getting it set. I want to put it there, and I can slacken these when I've made the torque arm and align it all then. This is just clamping the plate to the pannier. Just gives it a bit more strength. It just spreads the load. Instead of having two mounting bolts at the top on washers, it's now got five. Um, as you can see, that's already pretty sturdy look, but with the bottom one on, it should be bomb proof. Right, now I'm going to start making the bottom stay to stop the panniers when you're going along, they're vertical, to stop them wobbling like that. Uh, and it just really makes them rigid. Uh, so I've put a 10 mil hole in uh, for the uh, pillion footrest mount. So that's the front mount. And there will be a hole in the back here that goes onto the uh, back of the panniers, onto that metal frame. Um, but obviously it needs to be dog leg shaped because the panniers out here and the footrest is there. So it's got to come out and back. So I've got to bend this. So I've slightly rounded the end. I'll tidy all this up once I've bolted it on. Uh, I'll take it off and properly radius these. I've just done a little bit with an angle grinder. Uh, so next, uh, I've got to heat this cherry red and, uh, and then bend it in the vise. Uh, so that's what we're going to do next. Here's the mark uh, that I want to bend it on. Now the thing is, if I clamp that in the vise now, like that there, which is where I'm going to bend it, uh, and heat it here, the vise will suck the heat out of it below that line. So it's best to try and get it cherry... I'll try with this blowtorch. Really, I need something a bit hotter. That's all I've got, though. Uh, so I'll heat that cherry red, and then I'll clamp it in the vise, and then quickly try and knock it. Uh, I think I want about 45 degrees on it. So uh, it's always best to do it a little bit less than you think you need, and then you can go again straightening it. You can straighten it, but it's better if you can get it the right angle uh, without overbending it. So let's see how it goes. I think this blowtorch is going to struggle with this, but we'll see how it goes. It's quite a thick bit of steel. There we go, look, it's starting to glow. This doesn't have to be that accurate. It's just to get an angle on it. Try and go fairly quickly. I think that'll do for the time being. And now I'm just going to quench it in some water. This also doubles up as my fridge. Here we go. And then we have a bend in it. Uh, I might have done that a bit too far, but uh, we'll have a look. Right, so there's the bend I've put in. Now, obviously, this is coming out at an angle. I now need to, the back bit's coming out like that. I need to straighten it up to line up with the plate. So I've got a ruler that's roughly straight, uh, and I'm pressing it on the plate. So that's the angle it wants to go. Hang on, let's move that back a bit. So there's not much distance on this. So if I touch that there, if I mark that there, 
that's roughly where the bend needs to be because I need to bend that in. Now, you always go slightly this side of the line because by the time you bend it, you've got the thickness of the metal. So it's actually crossing there. And I'm going to come back about three or four mil and then bend it. And hopefully that will be in line. Uh, and as you can see, it's not much of a bit there before I'm bending it back the other way. And normally this wants to be pretty parallel with that first bit. So that's roughly where I'm going to bend it to get it in line with the pannier. So I've now got my second mark of where I want to make the second bend to bring it back parallel with the pannier. So it's same again, heat it, put it in the vise and hopefully it'll all line up. slow doing that. I think that's enough actually. I think I've gone too far. I'm going to try that. I'll probably have to rejig that. But there we go, there's the other. It's roughly straight. We'll see how that is when I get it on the bike. There we go. Right, so uh, there's the bend I've got. I've got my 10 mil hole. I've slightly radius this. I'll tidy that up later. Uh, I'm just going to radius uh, this one a bit and then I'm going to drill the hole. That's the one that mounts sort of on the pannier end uh, and then we'll see if it fits. Right, that's it loosely radius. I'm not going to mega detail yet because I don't 100% know it fits. It should do, but let's get it on there uh, when it all works, then I'll detail it. Uh, so the last final job is to um, drill an 8mm hole because it's an 8mm bolt um, in this end. Right, there's a centre punch mark. Let's put that on there. Need my clamp. Just look at the mess I've made doing this. It's, it looks like a bomb's hit the place, but it's amazing how many tools you use just doing a simple job like this. I mean, look at it. Um, I go to other people's workshops and they're immaculate. Mine, sort of, I have tidying up phases where it's immaculate. Then once I'm in the middle of a job, all hell seems to break loose. I mean, look at it. That's why I can never find things when, uh, when I'm uh, looking. Now, first of all, I need to plug all this in. Right, there uh, we have um, one of these stays uh, for the bottom of the pannier. So there's, uh, that would be the left-hand side where it comes back from the footrest and onto the bottom of the pannier. Um, and as I said earlier, that stops it, the pannier wobbling in and out like this when you're going along. And that really is nice and strong and rigid. So look, I've got one. Uh, I'm not going to uh, film making another one uh, because that would get boring. Um, so I've just got to make another one of these. 
um, and then I can attach them to the panniers, which are already, I'll say loosely, they're not loose actually, but they're bolted on there, but they've got a little bit of jiggle room. Um, and then I can fit these and stand back and hopefully admire. So uh, I'm quite, it's mad, isn't it? Uh, I get quite excited about this. I've wanted some panniers on this bike since I've had the fairing, which has been a long while. It took me a while to find some. But so yeah, hopefully nearly at the final moment of assembly. I've made the second one of these. Uh, that's gone on and it's fitted beautifully. So now it's just the last one that I made and uh, hopefully this should fit as well. So um, let's just get it on the bike and uh, go from there. It's a little bit fiddly actually getting in here. Put that one on, just get it on the bolt. Try and this is where you need a third hand. Hang on. That's better. I'm not going to do this up tight yet. I'll get it so it'll still, I can still move that arm and get it on the bolt on the pannier. Just hope it does actually fit. I'll just seat this one now. I'm not going to do it up really tight. Then I'll seat the other one properly. And then I'll nip them both up to go about there I think just ever so slightly backwards pointing backwards these BMW footrests they're, they're great uh, they're perfect for this get that done up tight well, that, they're, they're quite similar I, I like them and it's moved them forward an inch as well so you should just about be able to get on those uh, now tighten this one up I want to absolutely do these up mega tight because uh, it will crunch the panniers. So on these I put nylock nuts so that when you do them up like this they won't rattle loose. That's what are nylock nuts for. Um, so you don't have to do it up mega tight. That won't undo because it's a nylock. So you just firm it up and don't crunch the fiberglass. I've got big washers on it anyway to spread the load. I've got the plate to spread the load. So hopefully that won't all crack and break. And I mean, look at that, that's absolutely solid. That arm stops this movement sideways. Um, I'm happy with that. This one's on. Uh, I've got the torque arm on this one already. Save filming doing two of them. So look, let's just have a look. I think the alignment on those is lovely. They're pretty, pretty equal. Either side are for offset and all that kind of thing. I've just got clearance on the seat, so that's fine. Um, they're nice and near. The actual racks so they're tucked in and they hardly stick out from the fairing so that's great in fact they don't really stick out from the fairing um, so that's that that's happy days it needs a road test but I know that'll be fun I used to ride one of these back in the day um, so believe it or not it is finished except for the fact the whole lot's got to come off I want to get this blasted to get all the paint off for where I'm welded it up here and I think I'm going to get it powder coated gloss black so that's the last job to do but you've always got to do this is in effect a dry build it's been built it's checked when it's all on and you've got all your bolts cut to length so that once it's finished you're not messing around and hopefully don't scratch it so yeah powder coating uh, and definitely gloss black because uh, that'll go with all this stuff and I think that'll look fantastic 